Okay, so the topic of this video is going to be some of the characteristics of lipids and then eventually saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids. All right, so just a question to ponder, you know, how do organisms store energy? Ponder that and we're going to move on. Well, we're going to talk about lipids today. And again, lipids are a type of organic molecules al along with proteins and carbohydrates and nucleic acids. So that means they're, uh, they're molecules that are really built around carbon. All right, so when it comes to lipids, we're really talking about, you know, the fats, the oils, the waxes, you know, like, you know, beeswax, you know, the wax that makes up honeycombs. Uh, butter would be an example. Uh, the cooking oils that you're familiar with. You know, lipids, one of the more defining features is that they're insoluble in water. That just means they don't mix. So here's a layer of vegetable oil floating on top of water. And even if we were to get a spoon and stir this up, uh, the, the two would never mix and, and eventually the vegetable oil would just separate out on top like you see in the picture. So when it comes to lipids, let's talk about their two building blocks, their two parts. There's a head that we call the glycerol molecule and then attached to the glycerol dangling down are some tails called fatty acids. So here's a very generic drawing of a lipid. But a more realistic drawing might look might look a little bit like this. This is a lipid and there's the glycerol head and there's fatty acid 1, fatty acid 2, fatty acid 3. Now if we look at the molecular structure of the glycerol, there's the glycerol right there and here's a fatty acid. Notice uh, in red there's two H's and an O. Well that's going to be water in a moment. In, in a uh, in a dehydration synthesis reaction, water is removed and the fatty acid bonded to the, to the glycerol. Let's do that two more times. Here's another fatty acid and then water is removed and the second fatty acid bonded to the glycerol. And here's a third fatty acid and water is removed. And notice how we now have one gigantic molecule made from the glycerol head and then in this case, one, two, three fatty acid tails attached. And so here's a triglyceride again. And if we look at the function of uh, triglycerides, this is really an energy storage molecule. There's energy stored in the bonds of the atoms that make up a triglyceride. And so if we look at one of the fatty acids here, you know, flashing in red are the bonds in between the carbons and the carbons and the carbons. And in that, in those bonds there are energy or is energy that the cell can use for its needs. A secondary function of lipids is insulation. You know, if you're a whale or you're an elephant seal and you're swimming through, you know, the chilly ocean waters, having a thick layer of blubber helps to absorb or helps it, sorry, trap heat uh, to, you know, to keep you warm. And it's a great form of insulation for organisms that live in cold environments. And another function for lipids is in the structure of our cells. You know, here's a cell right here. If we zoom on into the cell membrane, and when we zoom into the cell membrane here, we see the basic unit of the cell membrane, a phospholipid. So you might remember uh, from learning about cells that the phospholipids and the cell membrane, the phospholipids are the foundation of the cell membrane. And the cell membrane regulates uh, what can enter and exit within the cell. Also, there's another lipid in the cell membrane. Embedded within the cell membrane are cholesterol molecules. These are very important in adding flexibility to the cell membrane. So I know lipids often have a negative uh, stereotype to them because we associate lipids with fats. Uh, but here's two examples of lipids that are the very foundation of our cells. So let's start to focus now on the difference between saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Here is the backbone of a saturated fatty acid. Flashing in red, you'll notice a single bond. In between every carbon and carbon, there's a single bond. This is characteristic of a saturated fatty acid. And the reason it's called saturated is because when I add the rest of the atoms, the carbons are filled with hydrogens. And the word saturated 
just as a fancy word that means to be filled with. So saturated fatty acids are these chains of carbons that are filled with hydrogens. And so notice how the chain is basically in a straight line. The chain is therefore very densely compacted and these saturated fatty acids, fatty acids tend to be solid at room temperature, hence butter being solid at room temperature and lard being solid at room temperature. Saturated fatty acids tend to be uh, most of the animal fats. And so again, butter is made from cow's milk and lard is made from pig fats. Now there are exceptions to this, but that's just a general characteristic that saturated fatty acids tend to be animal fats. But if we look at unsaturated fatty acids, notice in between a couple, you can see it blinking red, in between a couple of the carbons is a, what looks like an equal sign or a double dash. This is called a double bond. That double bond creates a little crooked kink in the chain of carbons. And the reason it's called an unsaturated fat is because there's just a few less hydrogens than normal. If you look right here, are hydrogens needed in those two gaps right there? Do I need to draw in two more hydrogens? I hope you see the answer is no. Carbon can only bond four times. Right now, all those carbons have four bonds attached to them. There's no space for two more hydrogens. And so this kink, the double bond right there causes the, a kink in the chain and that causes the molecule to be less dense and liquidy at room temperature, hence vegetable oil. And another example would be some things like corn oil and peanut oil and avocado oil. Again, oils that come from plants and also fish fats tend to be unsaturated fatty acids. Well, if we look at, you know, digesting and breaking down lipids, well, that involves a hydrolysis reaction. And so hydro implies water and lysis means to break down. And in a hydrolysis reaction with the addition of water, a lipid can be broken down. And so here's a water molecule and enzymes along with water will break off one of the fatty acids. Let's do that again. Here's another water molecule that breaks off the middle fatty acid. Let's do that one more time. Here's another water molecule, breaks off the third fatty acid. So notice the lipid has been broken down into the glycerol, which is the part on top, and then the three fatty acids, which are the three on the bottom. And so let's talk about a medical condition known as arterial sclerosis. So normally, here's an artery with red blood cells traveling through them. And so normally blood will flow freely. However, arther arterial sclerosis is a medical condition where there's a buildup of cholesterol and, 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 um, and plaque that builds up in the arteries. And you can see it can cause blockages. And ultimately, this can have some negative side effects like reduced circulation, blood clots, high blood pressure. And this can be attributed to, you know, a, a diet with, um, you know, high amounts of cholesterol or uh, uh, high amounts of lipids. When you get older, you might have to, you know, check your cholesterol levels. And so the red level, high, green level, desirable. And the picture on the bottom, again, just sums up arterial sclerosis. The top picture shows a normal artery wide open so blood can flow freely. The bottom picture shows the plaque and how the artery has kind of partially closed. And so these are a little, some of the characteristics of lipids here. And so here's a little practice quiz for you. Pause the video, try to answer these questions. If you're in my biology class, I'm happy to check your answers. Thanks for watching.